best teacher is exemplification. I would plan. I'd uh, come to master planning or I'd start planning out your life and um, your teenager will watch that. You know, if, if, I, if I do my plans, my life demonstrates it. When they see you getting results and going, what the hell you're doing to get the results, they're going to be more likely to do it. As, as Einstein said, te greatest teacher is exemplification. If you go out and exemplify, you're going to get the most done. Whatever you're doing, if you're in a job that you are got your primary source of income and you have another career that you're attempting to get launched, my advice, um, I mean, some people, if you have some liquid capital and you've got enough reserve to go and start the business, then maybe that's one path. You just go out and do it. But if you don't, my advice is to do a number of things. One, take a list of everything that you're doing right now in your business, current business, make a list of them. And then ask, how is doing this right now helping me in my future career? And once you answer that, and don't answer one answer, answer 10 to 20 or more answers per job responsibility. How's it helped me get there? If you can see that what you're doing is on the way, not in the way, your energy will go into that more effectively. You'll be more likely to move closer to this objective. And then what you want to do is you want to master plan out the new objective so you know what you're going to do and make sure it serves somebody and earns the income. A lot of people go out of fantasy, don't think of a way it's going to serve people that's not marketed properly. You know, I had a lovely gentleman last night, a really lovely gentleman that I met with in Sydney, who is a very bright gentleman, and he wanted to go out and be involved in teaching, but he didn't package what he had as sufficient as he could. I mean, without a doubt, just talking to him, he was extremely bright. Uh, you could see he was dedicated to learning. He had great knowledge. There's no doubt in my mind he could help people, but he hadn't packaged it in a way that met the needs of people. And so he ended up going back to his comfort zone because it, it was making money. And he, and he about gave up on his goal because he didn't plan it. That's why planning is so important. And, uh, but if he planned it out and thought through, and I, and I gave him five or six questions in a few minutes that we chatted, um, to, they'd help him start to think a little differently. And he goes, I know what to do. He saw it. And you could see him getting the, this vision back because he didn't plan. And so his vision was sitting there. It was a great possible vision. He didn't plan it out. He didn't break it down to small bites. And he didn't meet the needs of people the way he packaged it. And therefore, he was stuck. So if you're doing something, I assure you, it's on the way. It's not in the way but you need to plan out what you're doing and make sure it's clear and then link what you're doing now to get you there. And once this new thing is making you the money or equal money or more money, you'll let go of the other one and say, thank you. If you have a goal, if I have a goal to uh, earn a certain amount of money this year, and uh, let's say it's uh, half a million dollars, something like that, a million dollars, or even a hundred thousand or 50,000, doesn't matter how much, if I don't see that at the beginning of the month, at the end of the month, that I'm $4,000 to $5,000 uh, of income, then I'm, I'm, my metrics are showing that I'm not on track yet. If I show that, it, that I had three, and then the next month I see four, and the next month I see five, the next month I see six, at the end of the year, I'm on track. So it, evidence is basically metricing what you're doing and making sure you're setting out and getting what you set up to do. If I set out to reach so many people on webinars and podcasts and, and live um, TV and radio and all those things, if I don't see any evidence, I'm not metricing those, I'm not going to know what I'm doing. So that's what evidence is. So you, you're basically measuring what you're getting done. Anytime you have negative self-talk, I guarantee you the thing you're pursuing isn't your highest value. It's a fantasy. Negative self-talk is a feedback to you to let you know you're pursuing something that's not really important. Guarantee it. You're trying to be somebody you're not. You know, I had a lady that was having negative self-talk. She says, you know, I, I keep sabotaging my business. I keep sabotaging my business. Her highest value was raising family. Her highest value was her children. And her children were at a, still a young age. And she had this fantasy that she was going to start this business, online business, and do this website, and do this stuff. And no matter what, her children were taking up all the time and things were coming up and she'd have to go and take care of her children and everything else. I said, ma'am, 
your highest value is your children. You're dedicated to being a mom at this stage. And you're fantasizing about doing a business, but there's no evidence of that being accomplished. You're, 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 this is not real. So either we need to go and find out how the business is going to help you with your children and link it to the children. And how is the spending time with the children going to help your business and make those link? Because anytime two values are close together, they enhance each other. Or shift values and stack up enough benefits of how stacking up the benefits of building a business right now is so high that it takes precedence over your children. Um, or not over them, but maybe alongside them. But if not, you're not going to do it. And she was beating herself up and wondering why she was sabotaging and not doing it because it really wasn't highest. It was a fantasy. It's like people saying, I want to be financially independent. 1% make it. 99% don't. But 100% put their hands up when I say, how many want to be financially independent? Most people don't know what their values are. That's why I want you to go online and do the value determination process on the website. Get clear about that. Don't waste your time on goals that aren't aligned with your values. So I'm going to confront passion. Passion, go look up right now, whoever's online right now, go up to the, your little cell phone, go look up the word passion, look up etymology, E-T-Y-M-O-L-O-G-Y, passion-etymology, and look up what the definition means, and it'll blow your mind. Most personal development junkies, gurus out there are, are talking about find your passion, get passionate, get your passion, da, da, da. I'm the only one that's probably going to tell you it's not about passion. Passion means to suffer. And compassion means to suffer with somebody by its etymology. So if you want to go suffering, go get passionate. Animals have passion. The animal passions are greed, lust, uh, sloth, media gratification, you know, uh, addiction. These are the passions. An inspired mission is different than a passion. I'm going to teach you in all my programs, I'm, a, I'm about inspired missions, not passions. If you want to go and do passions with other people, that's fine. But passions are transient. They're impulse-based. They're instinct avoiding. They're basically transient. They go up, you get a high, you go down. Passions are what usually cause people to lose money in the stock market. They're emotional exuberances. So I know you hear something different than that, but I'm going to lay it straight. Go look it up, read, do your homework, quit just following somebody's statement without thinking it through and learning, and realize that an inspired mission is different than a passion. And a passion is not where it's at. I'm not passionate. I'm an inspired man on a mission. That's a different energy. That's something that you'll do pain and pleasure in. A passion is avoiding pain, seeking pleasure, and setting up a manic episode and a fantasy episode and rising up with a fantasy and then crashing because you're unprepared and you're basically not preparing things in advance. So I'm not promoting a passion in my seminars. I personally define it and let them understand the distinctions. So if you want an inspired life, you're not going to do it pursuing temporary emotional passions. You're going to do it by being inspired by something that's a spontaneous calling from within by living congruently with your highest values and setting real goals in real time with real strategies that have real meaning. If you do, you're going to have an inspired life. And, and, and people are going to go, oh, wow, you're inspired. It's inspiring being around you. So I'm, I'm just, I blew that one for you. I don't, I, I, I may as well just hit you. You have a value on something else, relationships, family, um, uh, serving people, social causes or whatever. If you don't have a value on wealth building, it's not going to happen. I, I, I might as well just hit you with reality. Uh, my experience, the people that are wealthy and have financial independence have it in the top three or four values. It's not there. Um, I, I didn't have it up until 30. No, up until 28. I didn't have a value on wealth building. I had a value on saving money to buy things, buy clothes, buy a car, buy this, buy a trip, buy equipment. I didn't have any value on wealth building until age 28. In 28, I got a wake up call. I got 10 questions that woke me up about what's really meaningful, which is some of the same 10 questions I do in master planning about finances. That shifted me and made value of wealth building go up on my values. So if you want to go and do that, um, you want to go and I have a, the six steps to wealth or come to master planning itself and I'll make you do it. You're going to actually do the exercise in master planning 
to raise it up and learn how to raise things up on your values. Because money circulates to the economy from those who value at least to those who value at most. If you don't have a value on wealth building, it isn't going to happen. <laughs> You're going to, if you have a higher value on buying groceries and buying trips and going to the uh, cinema and, and buying shoes and clothes and buying seminars and buying this and buying that or whatever it is, whatever is highest on your value, if it's not linked to wealth building, wealth building is not going to happen. And uh, you're going to keep spending money on that. I had a lady that was in Dallas and uh, she could not get ahead financially, no matter what she did. She was attending the seminars, but I explained to her, unless you have a value on wealth building, it's not going to happen. Well, I do a lot of stuff. I go work really hard. I, but always something comes up. And I said, well, those things that keep coming up that it's blow your money are things higher on your value than saving. When you really have a value on saving and investing money, you don't let secondary things interfere with it. And so we had to shift your values. We did it in master planning. We also did a breakthrough. And in the process of doing it, she finally got somewhere. Now, she wasn't saving a lot when she started, but it's not how much. It's the habit of doing it. And she increased it, as I instructed. And in master planning, I actually you actually map out what you're going to save, how you're going to save it, what you're going to do, what your strategies on doing it. Um, so you break away the fantasies and you get somewhere. And the people that I know, I, I was doing a, the master planning in Sydney, Australia, three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. Pardon me, it's, it'll be four years now uh, coming this uh, March, February. And um, I asked the group, there was about 120 people attending, and I asked, how many of you um, right now have started your financial plan from either master planning or from the prophecy program um, uh, thing? I was blown away. I was expecting about 40% or something like that. 87% of the people had initiated it partly from master planning that they'd previously done or prophecy program. Unbelievable. I was blown away. 87% were on track with a consistent increasing of savings and investments. So it can be done, but you just have to have a value. You have to shift the values to get there. Well, in actuality, nothing is missing. And I, I explained that in the breakthrough experience, nothing's missing. But to say that you're not here to grow is, is ludicrous. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I had this guru that I confronted on that one time. He was an Indian guru. And he says, you know, he says, I don't uh, pursue anything. Everything is uh, abandoned, everything else. And I said, well, yeah, but you just got through telling me you need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he says, where's the bathroom? I said, well, that's a goal because you now have a body need to, to go to the bathroom. And says, you also want some food. That's a goal. So you have a goal. Everybody has a goal. You, you would prefer to have more knowledge. The guru is studying every day. You could prefer to study and meditate and learn. I said, so you have no more goals to meditate? No, I have goals to meditate. You have no more goals to learn more knowledge and become more enlightened? He goes, oh, yes. I said, well, don't lie to yourself that you have no goals. You're not going to sit there and be uh, uh, goalless. You, you know, it's, as long as you're green, you're growing. As soon as you're ripe and you're rot, if you think you're done and you've, you know everything, I mean, think about that. I've never met any human being that isn't designed to expand their awareness and their influence in life on a daily basis. You know, I, I mean, that's insane. Uh, they want to they wanna have, they want to expand. They want to uh, open up. Now, you can do that by perception, decision, or action. You can expand your perceptions and realize you already have things you didn't know you had. You can, but that's still a goal to become aware, a goal to uh, influence, a goal to be more present. I mean, you're, you're going to, the second you're present, you're going to get distracted by events because you're going to go pee or you're going to go and have to talk to somebody or you're going to have to go eat. And then you're going to be out of present sometimes and you're going to have a goal to be present again. So I think you've got to get real about what spirituality is. I, I, I never like to put spirituality in a box. I think spirituality is everything. Everything that a person does is part of spirituality, as far as I'm concerned, even goals. I assure you, you have a high value. It's just you haven't taken the time to identify which it is. And um, that's why I say go on the line and do the value determination process or come to the master planning and let me let, let's go through it methodically together. And um, because it, it, there's no such thing as a person that doesn't have a highest value. I've, I've been doing this a long time, 40 years on goals and, and values easily. And I assure you that it, everybody has it. Um, so you have it. You have goals and you have things that are high in value.
I'm not a big guy on, on, you know, you know, going, oh my God, I'm a success. I don't think of myself as a success. I think of myself as a man on a mission, inspired mission. But I don't sit there and go, oh my God, I accomplished this. And I go, whoo, whoo. And I go, you know, I go in rah, rah. I'm not a rah, rah guy. I'm, I'm grateful for the goal. I document. I have the largest collection of gratitude of anybody I've ever met. I document it every single day. I've actually typed in that I had the opportunity to do this presentation tonight. I just typed it in before I started it. The opportunity to do that, to reach thousands of people, that's already on my goal, my, my gratitude list. I'm a firm believer in doing a gratitude list, document it, but sitting there and going, wow, 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 and hi, 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 and oh man, and celebrate and go have a drink and stuff like that to me is, is unnecessary. I, I don't, I'm not interested in that. I am grateful for the opportunity to do it and I get on to the next one because it's, it's, uh, it's inspiring to achieve. You know, every weekend in the breakthrough experience, when I do the breakthrough experience, I watch people's lives change. I watch hearts open. I watch people break through stuff and I get letters from people and documenting that and putting on my, my gratitude journal every day. That's a metric. That's a, an inspiration. And that's a, that's a celebration with a tear in the eye for a moment. But then I go out and it inspires me to go do more work. First, identify what the value is, and then ask yourself, okay, what is that I absolutely love to do, and how do I get handsomely paid to do it, and how do I structure it? Um, I, I've In master planning, in one master planning, we started 13 companies, and it started from just that. We did looked at what the values are, started from there, and worked out, and looked at what they love doing and what they spontaneously do, and I just had one of those this weekend at the Breakthrough Experience, and in um, Melbourne, uh, it just exactly that happened. She goes, oh, this is what I love doing. This is my value so but I can, I, how can I ever make a living doing that? In five minutes of a conversation, she saw it. And she just sat there and she got tears in her eyes. She gave me a big hug and she goes, I can't believe I've never seen this. This is so obvious. I know I can do this. We just sat down and we did a little bitty master plan kind of thing and boom, she got it. And then and she saw how she could go and make more money than she's making right now doing what she's doing. When you're doing something you're inspired by it and you package it in a way that serves people, there's no lack of income. And I, I just, I, I'm a firm believer in that. I love helping people do that. It's when I, one of my favorite parts of master planning is sitting up in the front and while they're all working and planning out their lives and doing that, I interject every once in a while gems and insights, but I'm up in the front and the people are coming up and we're working individually like a private consulting. You know, I normally charge like 3000 an hour for this, but during master planning, they, they come up and they get three days of master planning, uh, private consulting. And we're going through and we're solving what they see as obstacles and we're getting them clear on their plan and they're helping them see how they can do it. And it, amazing stuff gets done and they go back and then they, they have a, an inspiration and they get, and sometimes they just, they're just typing. And when the class is over, they're still typing because <laughs> they see how they can do it. And it's quite, it's quite inspiring. When you're hiring somebody, you want somebody that's inspired by the job that you're going to delegate. So be clear about the job description. And uh, then you want to have the best you can find for that person. You want to, be able to hire somebody that's greater at knowledge about it than you are so you can release it. And they're engaged and inspired and it's highest on their values. And they can see how that job duty is going to help them get what they want. So you can release it and not have to micromanage it and push them uphill and get on with doing what you love doing. But if you're not ready to hire that, do it in increments. If you think, if you believe that the advantage of going and hiring that right now, now will catalyze your company to go for it, take the risk. The worst thing can happen is at the end of a month or two or three months, the amount you paid to get that done, if it doesn't come out the way you want it, you can refine it. You know, it's be organic, but that's where fore, fore planning is. If you're going out and you're actually doing the fore plan, you can actually see whether that's probably going to make the money or not. And if not, don't hire them. If you can't see how it is, if you can't give them the action steps that you feel with certain it's to generate more income than the cost, then you haven't done your plan properly yet. Yeah, but the thing is, is if you're getting a value out of Facebook because your highest value is socializing, and then you say, well, I'm arbitrarily going to now just go read a book. If that's not your highest value, it's just going to, you're going to go back to Facebook. You need to truly set a goal and know what's really valuable to you. Now, I don't do a lot of 
you know, social media every single day. I got an intense schedule. I got an, uh, an agenda every single day. It keeps me busy every day. And so I, I do what is the highest priority things for me today. If social media is providing you more advantages and disadvantages, you're going to continue to do that. If reading a book is giving you more advantage and disadvantage, you'll do that. But if you don't see how the book's going to give you that result, you're not going to do it. You're going to go back to social media. Be honest with yourself when you're setting goals. Don't just arbitrarily pick one. And, oh, I need to be doing this. I should be doing this. I ought to be doing this. Because those aren't your goals. Look at what your life demonstrates. Anytime you want to raise a goal upon your value list or a value on your value list, stack up the benefits. Because when the why is big enough, the house take care of themselves. Write enough reasons why reading the book is going to help you in social media. Write enough reasons why the social the, the, the reading of the book is going to help you in the areas that you know are important. But first do your values to find out what's important and then link reading to that. I have no problem reading. I love reading. I, every minute I get extra, I'm, I'm into reading a book or reading online. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining.